good to be here. Yeah. Don't have a big crowd today. You must heard I was coming, huh? <laughs> they heard I wasn't going to be here. That's what they heard. <laughs> That's probably right. That's probably right. It's good to see everybody. I was uh, married in this church. Spent a lot of years in this church. Buried a loved one through this church. Cried in this church and rejoiced in this church. Where's my daughter anyway? <laughs> okay. Can't see uh, close up with glasses on, so we'll take these off. Going to do uh, Psalm um, 18 today. Um, one of my favorite psalms. So, um, some favorite verses that I have and repeat on a regular basis out of this song. And so I'd like to share it with you. Psalm 18. So it gives the background, actually, here. It says, a psalm of David, servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this psalm in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. As many of the psalms, if not all of the psalms, they were the psalmist experiences and prayers and praises, as well as Christ experiences and praises. So we start. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Think of that verse. That's the title of this message, the Lord, my strength. You know, most of us, we can say, I will thank the Lord, my Savior. But how many of us can say, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength? The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. You know, most of us take God as an insurance policy. These, all these things that God was to David only came because he trusted him. To trust means to rely on. The Lord is my rock. The idea of, of especially in the Middle East, where so much sand, a rock was something that you could plant your feet on. You could build a house on. It was immovable. My fortress. You know, that which you could go to and would shield you. My deliverer. How many times David experienced deliverance? Over and over again. The Lord was his strength. My God, my strength, he repeats it. In whom I will trust. My buckler. Buckler was a shield. A horn of my salvation. Whether that be the, the horn that would, would, would be blown as, as help came, or whether that's the horn of some great stag that would defend himself and run through his enemy, my high tower. And I think a lot about the high towers of fortresses. High tower was built upon the corners, on the sides of the ramparts, on the bulwarks, they made them high so that arrows couldn't reach them. Think of that. The Lord is my high tower. Psalm 118, 8 to 9 says, It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. You know, the trouble is, as I said, we make God an insurance policy. We want to put God... And trusting, but we trust everything else first. In other words, we trust our doctor before we trust the Lord. We trust science before we trust the Lord. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Do you remember that song? I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. 
praised. He is worthy to be praised. So the next verses, um, four through, I think it's uh, 15, are verses that are rem reminiscent of what God did in Egypt, even more than what God did in Egypt. There's some, some imagery here that maybe some of the greatest imagery of God's might and terribleness, as the psalmist says, than any other place in the Bible. And I think, um, I think that not only did David see some of this spiritually taking place, but I think this may be referring to what took place on the cross and when God raised Jesus from the dead. And think of this, this imagery. When I say that the cross and when God raised Jesus from the dead, I've often thought, you know, Christ was the word of God become flesh. And it says that he upholds holds all things by his word. By him all things subsist. What happens when you crucify and slay the word of life? I mean, what happens to creation? You know, what happened on the cross and in the resurrection was greater and caused more work and strain than God created the world in six days. And when God delivered Jesus from death, and he was in death. And when men die, they, they go down, so to speak. So listen to the imagery. As Christ being on the cross and thereafter, the sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the Lord. You know the, the, the passage in the New Testament when Jesus is on the cross that brings tears to my eyes more than any others is, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes. Yes. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. And my cry came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. You know, Matthew, it says, speaking of the cross, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. The earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. It says darkness came upon the earth for three hours when Jesus was upon the cross. Returning to our psalm, verse 8, There went up, a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Reminds me of a verse in, in uh, Job where it speaks of the glory of God's two creatures. One was Leviathan. So the, the great dragon, some people say. Verse 9, he bowed the heavens also. Think of, that. Think of that imagery. It says God stretches out the heavens like a curtain. It says he put a firmament over the earth to separate the waters below from the waters above. Here, the imagery is 
He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub, did, he did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion about him were dark waters, thick clouds of the skies. You know, we're not filled in what happened between the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ. We don't know, except that Christ paid for our sins, the judgment was upon him, he died, truly died. I can't help but think all the hosts of heaven, their hearts skip the beat. Here the eternal God, without beginning of days or end of life, That which was unbreakable was broken. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. Hailstones, coals of fire, the Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, he shot out lightnings and discomforted them, then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke. O oh Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. I've often wondered that when Christ died, the third person of the Trinity, you ever see the one movie of Stephen King's that were the, I forget what it was, but all of a sudden, everything starts, this thing starts going across the earth and everything starts turning into dust. Did you ever see that movie? I forget what it was. Almost picture that with Christ dying, that, that the very creation itself stood in the balance. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. The Lord is our stay. Is he not? Amen. Greater is he in us than he was in the world. He brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. You know God delights in you. When you're in Christ, you're a part of Christ. God never sees you as an individual again. I mean, he sees you as, a, as an individual, but he never sees you separated from Christ. We see ourselves separated from Christ. We go through our day as the same person we were before we were born again. But God never sees you separate from Christ. He delights in you. You read Psalm 91 today as your scripture. I quote from here. God really delights in us when we trust him. When we set our love upon him. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, the promises of the Bible, this Psalm 91 is quoted for Jesus. You know, when he was at the, the Satan took him to the top of the temple and was ready and told him, jump off for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all of his ways. So we look at that Psalm 91 and we see that Christ, that it pertained to Christ. How do we know when we see the promises of God, whether they pertain to Christ or pertain to us? The verse in the New Testament says, all the promises of God are yes in him. And amen 
in him, as we abide in Christ. And we don't abide in Christ for the most part. Abiding in Christ is a moment-by-moment -moment exercise in our day, mm -hmm. keeping Christ in our presence. Amen. But the promises of God, every one of them, this one here, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. As we abide in Christ, that promise is ours. It's good to see you here, Jim. God's delivered you again. Verse 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Now, we're going to get a few verses here where it almost sounds like, well, you'll see what it sounds like. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not departed wickedly, have not wickedly departed from my God, for all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him. I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. You know, David wrote this. David also wrote that if thou markest iniquity, Lord, who can stand, right? David understood grace. David understood the Old Testament law. And I'm sure there were times in David's life that he could write this and say, you know, I've kept the law. I've sinned, but I've provided, you know, I've done the sacrifices that were necessary for my sin. I have not wickedly departed from God. You know, my heart's been upright before God. Yes, I've made mistakes, but God has provided the sacrifice. Certainly Christ could say this, because Christ didn't sin. But for us, how does this, how does this interact? For us, there are two laws that play here. Just like we have gravity, and then we have a lift, that airplanes can defy gravity. There are two laws here. One is, and it's repeated in the Bible several times, God will render to man according to his works. That's repeated throughout the Bible. Even in Revelations, it's repeated. Then there is the second law. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Is that not right? Is that not New Testament grace? That's the center of our gospel. And both of those play out in our life to some degree. We should cling to the second one always, because we don't walk perfectly. The next verse is 25. Is is basically the law of liberty that James speaks of. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt show thyself froward. I think the first part of that verse is especially important to us because it agrees with the Lord's prayer, forgive those as we forgive others, right? With the merciful, God will show mercy. <laughs> 27 Thou wilt save the afflicted people but will bring down high looks throughout the Bible the one thing that is repeated is that God will bless the humble and he will resist those who are prideful you know it is in, in, in my younger years I wish that were taught me or ingrained in me better um, there is a arrogance in youth sometimes. Oh Lord, what does thou require of me but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before our God? For thou will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Praise God. I have known darkness many times. Many times you go through life and you have choices to make. You don't know which way to go. And you need God's light. And we pray for light and God gives it. Now some of these are the next few verses are my favorite. 
For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. I can picture David in his battles, in times that he needed strength that was supernatural, and he, he, he expresses it here. God supernaturally gave David strength as he gave Samson strength. I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. The Lord is my strength. That's why he could say it. You know, King Asa says in Chronicles, Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God, O oh Lord, no one but you can help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O oh Lord our God, for we trust in you alone. You know, that's where God comes on the scene when we trust in God alone. Not as an insurance policy, not as that which we fall back to if all else fails. O oh Lord our God, we trust in you alone. It is in your name that we have come against this vast horde. O oh Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. Verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. Now, I love, I love a, a, a similar verse in Psalm 12. It says, The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver is tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. When I read the word of God, I know it's not the words of man. I know they are distilled, they are perfect, and they will stand to eternity. He is a buckler to all that trust in him. He's a shield to all that trust in him, to all that trust in him, rely on him. For who is God save the Lord? Who is a rock save our God? Psalm 125 says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Praise God. Praise God we can plan ourselves on something in this life that's not movable. Because life is moving around us in every direction. And probably the favorite verse that I have in this psalm is, it is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Mm -hmm. Take that verse and remember it. The Lord is your strength. It is God that girdeth you with strength and makes your way complete. Now here's the great thing. It's God that girds you with Christ is our strength. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the mystery hidden from the ages and the generations, Christ in us, the hope of glory. This brings us to some New Testament verses on that God curbs, God girdeth me with strength. God girds you with Christ. Ye are complete, Colossians 2.10, ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Oh, that I may trust him more, that I may know my completeness in him, that I may have him for every need. Yes. Ephesians 1.19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe according to the working of his mighty power? To usward. When you see that usward, I think of this. Remember those static balls? If you would touch it, the electricity moves toward your hand. It's like that power of God is right there, ready to spark forth unto us who trust in Him. Hudson Taylor, that great missionary to China. I just recently got his book. You'd be happy to know, Brendan. Brendan's always surprised how long it takes me to read a book. I've gotten to page three on that book. <laughs> but it was said of him on the cover, because I didn't get that far. Hudson Taylor had many secrets. Yet they were but one simple, profound secret of drawing for every need, temporal or spiritual, upon the fathomless wealth of Christ. That's 
synonymous with, with, with this verse in Ephesians, which says, Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach unto the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. That when God gave us the Spirit of Christ, he shall be endowed with power from high. And it is the Spirit of Christ that brings Christ's reality into our life. You really can't separate them. The riches of that are unsearchable. And some men who have had to trust in that have found that Christ is there for every need. Not just to influence our mind, but Christ gives strength to our bodies, peace to our hearts. He even renews our strength like the eagles. Shall run and not be weary and walk and not faint. You know, I was just followed a man by the name of uh, a great saint by the name of A.B. Simpson for years. And, and that was his main theological emphasis is that Christ is our life. And as we trust Christ, as being our life, he will be to us everything in life that we need. He will be victory over everything. He will be strength, physical strength for our bodies. And so I have, I have tried to grasp hold of that so that it's a reality. It's one thing to hear it, to read about it, and for... 10, 15 years I've tried to make that a reality. And I still just scratch the surface of that. And every now and then that something breaks through. And the other day I was out working. And I've been, uh, as many as you know, once you pass 50, you start feeling weak. You have weaknesses. And you have days that you can't work outside like you wanted to because something's hurting. And on that particular day, my knee was giving out, and I still had much work to do. This is last weekend, and I had uh, some trees I had planted that I had to get water to because it hadn't rained for a while, and I had to carry it up the hill, blah, blah, blah. And I could tell, by the way, my knee was acting that it wasn't going to make me through the day, so I just started confessing that. The Lord is my strength. Christ is the strength of this knee. Christ is the strength of this back. And I got through that day, surprisingly, after the day, I thought, wow. And I even felt good that night. Usually I could barely move if I had night time. <laughs> God forbid the next morning when you can't walk out of bed. But I thought, wow, the Lord really is my strength. If I'd only trust Him more. And there is something, there is something about confessing it. You know, Christ is the Word of God, not the picture of God. Word. There's something about words, confessing scriptures. What time is it? My, I'm almost done here. David said in Psalm 71, Now also, when I am gray-headed, David is, is my hero of the Bible, apart from Christ. No wonder Christ would be the seed of David. No man lived a more full life. The ups and downs or knew the strength of God. You know, the Psalms in David were as much New Testament as New Testament is to us today. He knew what the Spirit of God could do within him. And so after having lived a life of seeing himself run through troops and jump, jumping over walls and slaying giants, and doing all kind of wonders and being healed from terminal illnesses. He says at the end, now also when I am gray, old and gray headed, oh God forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation. For everyone that is to come. Lastly, the last second, last New Testament verse I'll bring having to do with Christ being if Christ being our strength. The Lord is my strength. With 2 Corinthians, which shows that that strength comes out only in weakness. Only when we're weak can we rely on the strength of the Lord. I mean, there at least 
is when we see it at its best. 2 Corinthians, many know this verse, I'm sure. 12th chapter. My strength is made perfect in weakness, God told Paul. Christ told Paul. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I notice that. I notice that on the days that I am my weakest. Because when I'm not weak, you know, I may be in some other state where, where I'm just thinking on something, where I may be thanking God, or I may be just rejoicing in the beauty of the day. But when I'm weak, I'm concentrating on that weakness because that weakness is the thorn of my side. And at that point, it just constantly reminds me, I've got to get a verse, sing a verse say a verse to, 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 to distract me from this thing that's hurting me. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. One more New Testament verse, Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That's not a, that's not a, a verse thinking that when you die, God's going to quicken you. It says quicken your mortal bodies. You know when your resurrected body is not going to be a mortal body. He's speaking of this life. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Then we go on through the last few verses. And I'm not going to finish the psalm. Just give you a few more verses. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. Hinds were a type of goat. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. I don't know if you've ever seen goats on TV when they climb. Mm -hmm. They climb walls that you can't imagine. You, you wonder how in the world. They, they, it's like they're fearless. They could be 100 feet in the air and they go from one little ledge to this little ledge. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands the war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Praise God for his gentleness, for his patience. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. That's as far as I'm going to go on the song. The rest of it is is, uh, is there for you to read. But take one thing from this is the Lord is my strength. The Lord is your strength. Amen. Not just that the Lord gives you strength. The Lord is, you str is your strength. Christ is your strength. The Lord girdeth me with strength. God has girded you with Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.